What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Electric Productions. I'm Jay and today we're going to be taking a look at the website G2A. Roll intro. <laughs> Okay, so G2A is a site that you can go on to purchase keys for different games that you're interested in. You can then take said keys and activate them on whatever platform they belong to, whether it's Blizzard's or Origin or Ubisoft's or Steam, which is the big one. So once you've activated said keys on the platform that it belongs to, the game is then part of your library. Now I know there's been some controversy in the past with G2A about where they get their keys from or where some of the sellers get their keys from. I can't really speak to this because I'm not knowledgeable about it. What I do know is I've used GT, uh, excuse me, G2A a number of times in the past, and I've never had any issues or problems. I've purchased 30 to 40 products through the website, and only two or three times have I had minor issues. It was either getting the wrong game, or one time I didn't get any key at all. And all three of those were resolved within 48 hours. Uh, two of them, I was then sent the proper key, and one of them I got a refund. Not a big deal, stuff happens. So... I don't really have an issue with their website from a standpoint of quality control, layout, I can't speak to where people get the keys from, and I wish I could, but I simply don't have knowledge on that. The thing I do know that I didn't like very much is in the past they used to sell these key packs and they touted them as like, oh, 10 keys for $3, or 5 keys for a buck, or just these different key packs that you could purchase that were random keys. And I purchased a couple of them in the past, and the games were just crap. They weren't very good. They were usually Steam shovelware that nobody wanted or was interested in. They had mixed reviews, um, and they just they just weren't they weren't any good. They weren't there was no quality to them. So I kind of stayed away from these packs. Well, I haven't bought one in like two or three years. And when I went back on G2A earlier today, looking at a couple of games that are I'm interested in, I noticed that they now have these premium key packs. And they cost a little bit more, but they say like, oh, these are only games that have positive reviews or basically good games, in their opinion. So I thought, what the heck, let's try it out. Let's buy two packs, so essentially 10 games for $10. It came to a little bit more with taxes. It was like $11.25, I want to say, uh, for the two packs that I got. But the point is we get 10 games for around $10. So let's see how I fared. Let's see what kind of games I got. Now, a real quick kind of disclaimer here. G2A said if you want to purchase multiple packs, buy from different sellers because apparently these sellers buy a bunch of keys and they're kind of random in the keys they get, but they get like big clusters of the same keys. So you may be getting a random pack, but if you keep buying the same pack from the same seller, you might just see the same keys over and over and over again. So it's better to buy from different sellers. So I followed that advice and I did purchase two packs from two separate sellers that were not affiliated from what I could tell. So let's see how I fared. So you've probably seen over here scrolling around. Uh, this is the games that I got. I've got the keys grayed out with 3D boxes that can be slid out of the way uh, for use later on. I didn't activate any of the games yet. I did get 10 games, but there was still some duplicates even though I purchased from different sellers. So I got two copies of Perfect Universe Play With Gravity, two copies of Shadowrun Hong Kong, two copies of Xenodyne R, one copy of Men of War Assault Squad Game of the Year Edition, one copy of Victor Vran, one copy of Wanda, and one copy of Triple O's 2. All of these games, when I priced them on Steam, all of them came to $135 when added up and combined. So. $135 if you were to purchase them today from Steam, and I paid a little over $10 for all of them. That sounds good on paper, but is it actually a good deal? Are these games actually good games? Are they actually worth our time and our attention? Do they really have positive reviews on Steam? So let's jump into Steam really quick and take a look. I've got the games pulled up. So Triple O's 2 is a... It's a puzzler game where you, it's a lot like Lemmings, if you ever played Lemmings. You are giving your squad instructions of things to do, and you're micromanaging them, and they're trying to accomplish tasks to complete the levels. This kind of game's not my cup of tea. I'm not very interested in it. It did have positive reviews. It claims to be a follow-up to the best-selling time management game, The Tribolos. Okay, that, I don't know. I didn't play the first one, so I can't really speak to that. The reviews are positive, it's got like 64 reviews, and it says beautiful hand-drawn graphics over 90 levels, and a fully original soundtrack. 
So again, this is not my cup of tea, but maybe, just maybe, this is something where other people might be interested in it. Next game, Wanda. So Wanda is also a puzzler, but it's a story-based puzzler. So right away, I don't find the graphics to be very arresting. I know that may come across as shallow, but I'm kind of judging this book by its cover. I'm not really into the story-driven puzzle games as much. However, if you're into that kind of thing, it does have positive reviews. There are 17 of them, so there's not a lot of reviews. It looks like there was a couple of updates that came out for it, which is always a good sign that the developer is taking care of their game a little bit. There's some mini puzzles. Wanda's a story-focused game, but completely free of comprehensible dialogue. The entire story is told through the subtle interactions between the two robots and the environment itself in a show don't tell style. So if you're into story-driven puzzle games, then this might be one that you're interested in. Now, Victor Vran is an action RPG that I have played and very much enjoy. It is a great game. It's a lot of fun to play. If you like action RPGs, I don't think you'd be disappointed with this at all. The worst thing I could bring against it, and a few people have said the same, is that it's a little bit simplistic at times. But there's a wide variety of weapons, there's dynamic actions in the game like diving, dodging, and uh, things like that, so you actually can get out of the way of enemy attacks. And that's uh, the extensive character development, choose your weapons, items, outfits, destiny cards, powers to create your ultimate monster slaying build, invite friends so you can play with others, randomly generated items uh, in addition to the handcrafted ones to improve variety, customize your difficulty. You, it utilizes an Xbox controller if you want to play with that on the PC. Of course it's got mouse and keyboard support as well. It's not a bad looking game, it's a fun game and I think I got like at least 20 something hours out of it when I played it. So this one's a big W. I think this is a great game, especially if you like action RPGs. I don't think you'll be disappointed here, especially if you didn't own this game and you got it in one of the packs, then I think your $10 right there would be well spent. This game also came out on Xbox and PS4, if I'm not mistaken. Men of War Assault Squad, Game of the Year Edition. Now, this game is actually on sale right now. It's 80% off on Steam. The entire pack is. Men of War Assault Squad is an RTS. It takes place during the World Wars. It does have destructible terrain environments, which is kind of cool. There's a variety of land and air. I don't know if there's actually sea-based craft in this game that you can use. I actually own and have played Men of War Assault Squad 2. And one of the things that I noticed is a lot of people said that they preferred Men of War Assault Squad. Oh, there is, looks like water-based craft. They actually said they preferred the first game, it's just that the second game had some graphical updates that people liked, but they liked the gameplay of the first one more. So again, if you like RTS and you got this in your pack of games, I'd say you're doing pretty good. What else we got? Xenodyne R. Xenodyne R is a shoot 'em up and it is a simplistic looking shoot 'em up and I'm not crazy about the art style. It's got a very much MS paint shop kind of look to it, but the reviews are positive. There's only 15 of them, but they are positive. And the reason I think that it's gotten positive reviews is, is I looked and it's got branching paths in the game that you can take depending on the difficulty level that you want. It has five different ships with different pilots that you can utilize. It has unlockable content in the game and you can earn in-game currency to upgrade your ship. So it's got some different things to offer and even though the graphics on it are very simplistic, at the same time if a game's got simplistic graphics but awesome gameplay, a lot of times you end up forgetting what the graphics even look like as you're playing or aren't even paying attention. You're so sucked into the action. So yeah, this wouldn't be for me, but if you really like shoot 'em ups then it might be for you. And seeing as it does have positive reviews and it's worth $10, so far, it seems like we're doing pretty good. Shadowrun Hong Kong. Most people probably know about the Shadowrun series, even if they haven't played it very much themselves. So Shadowrun Hong Kong, here we go. This is a phenomenal game. I own this game. I love this game. Super fun game. Now the thing about Shadowrun Hong Kong is this. I actually played it mostly on my Android tablet. It came out, the first two Shadowrun games, Shadowrun Returns and Shadowrun Hong Kong, came out on Android and Apple as well as PC. And I played it on PC, so I didn't get the, or I'm sorry, I played it on Android, so I didn't get the PC experience. So I'm imagining it's even better on PC than it was on Android, and it was awesome on Android. They did come out with a third one that was like Dragon fall I think or something like that and that one was a PC exclusive did not come to the to the tablet market at all 
So this one here is very much worth your money. At $20, you're getting a great story, tons of character customization, strategy-based combat, and it is, even though it's strategy-based and turn-based, it still has a lot of visceral action in it that really sucks you in and I mean one wrong move in this game can totally wipe your whole party if you're not careful especially in the latter portions of the game but is it fun it is a lot of fun so this one's worth twenty dollars and I would say with over a thousand positive very positive reviews this is a great game to get and not a bad one to have in your pack I got two of those and two of Xenodyne R and lastly perfect universe play with gravity let's check that out this is another puzzle-based game. But this one, unlike the others, actually looks like fun to me. Um, again, I'm not much of a puzzler, but I really like the clean art style, the kind of sketchbook aesthetic. I like the gravity base. I, I like everything I see here. And this game is also co-op. You can play with your friends and have some, some competitions. It looks like a lot of fun. I got two of these keys as well, and that actually doesn't bother me because this is the perfect kind of game to give to a buddy, and then you and him can play it together. So, whereas uh, Shadow Run is single player, so I'm just going to be giving it as a gift to somebody, and they're going to be enjoying it, but I won't get to experience it with them. Getting two of a co op game, that's never a bad thing if it's a good co op game. The reviews for this are positive as well, and I think that they said there's something like nine, yep, nine gravity-inspired games featuring six hilarious local multiplayer modes, over 70 eye-popping single-player levels. So uh, this one doesn't bother me at all to get uh, to get and to have more than one of. And they've got Perfect Moon, which is classic platforming in a non-classic universe. Moon Life, control the feet of an alien creature directly in this quap-like uh, mode game. Star Starlight, fly your rocket ship through the galaxy in this thrust like. Moon Golf, an interplanetary game of golf. Gravity Dodge, a four player game of alternative gravity dodgeball. Balloon Pop, scramble to pop more balloons than your opponent. Rocket Ball, play football with rockets. Moon Volley, a game of volleyball around a little planet. And Space Race, race rockets against friends. Play with gravity. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this one as well. So, all in all, what do I think? Are these games worth the $10 I paid? Absolutely. Are they worth $135? No. You could get these games on Steam, like a good Steam sale, like the summer or the winter Steam sale, and you could probably pull all of them in for like, I don't know, maybe 40, 50 bucks. How much do I think this pack is worth if I was paying top dollar for it? Well, seeing as I own most of the games on this list already that I'm really interested in, for me, I wouldn't pay very much. And this actually gets to my main point here. If I didn't own these games, I'd be more than happy to pay $50 to get the games that I'm interested in this pack. And 50 is well above 10 So if I didn't already own these games, it would be more than worth it to me to get these premium packs and roll the dice. If you're somebody who has a bunch of Steam games, I mean like a lot, like, you know, a few hundred or more, then you probably don't want to mess around with these random packs very much because the chances of you getting a game that you want that you don't already own are going to be slim. But if you're somebody who's newer, is building your collection, uh, is looking to try some new games that you maybe haven't tried before, maybe some lesser known games, then I think these packs are not only a good option, I think they could be a great option. So it really depends on who you are and what you're looking for for your game library. But I would say at this point, this is a huge step up from the last time I purchased these kinds of things from G2A, and I'm not upset. I don't feel ripped off at all. Some of these games here are going to make amazing gifts, and I'd like those gifts to go to you, the viewers. So what I'm going to do is this. All I ask that you do, if you're interested in getting a game, go ahead and subscribe, like the video, and then let me know in the comments section below which game you'd like and why. I mean, it doesn't have to be long, just a brief little blurb. I like action RPGs or whatever. Uh, and then I will go ahead and message you with a key. And these keys, yep, they haven't been used. They've not been tested yet, so if you have any problems with it, you'd have to let me know, and then I'd have to file a claim with G2A. But like I said, I've purchased 30 to 40 games in my time, and I've had very few problems, so I don't anticipate there being any issues at all. That's pretty much going to do it for this video, guys. If you'd like to see me play any of these, do kind of a quick overview slash mini review of any of these games, go ahead and let me know that in the comment section below as well. If you're interested in perusing G2A, I have a link and it takes you to like their popular and like best priced games. 
I peruse them pretty often trying to pick up good deals on there. I also do, I think, Green Man Gaming and there's GOG, and uh, which is like good old games. And there's a few other ones that I like to peruse for, for good deals. And uh, But yeah, for the most part, it seems like a lot of the ones I end up getting, though, do end up being through G2A, only because there's sellers on there that get a hold of these games. They're not interested in it, and they sell it for really, really, really cheap. So it, it can work in your favor if you are willing to shop around a little bit. And with that, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate your time and your interest. It's always great to do these videos and try to bring good content to you guys. If there's anything else that you'd like to see me overviewing or doing, again, just let me know below. And as always, have a great day.